You are the Lord God Almighty. You're perfect in everything you do. The angels declare you are holy. And no one else compares to you. We stand in all of your glory. There is no other God like you. So here in your presence we offer you. What we were created to do. Let creation, every nation. You're perfect in everything you do. The angels declare you are holy. And no one else compares to you. We stand in all of your glory. There is no other God like you. And here in your presence we offer you what we were created to do. The creation. People shout your name. We lift our hands up to the sky. We lift your name on high. The creation, every nation, generation, give them praises. Let the people, all the children, lift your voices. Give them praises. The creation. every generation hallelujah we love on you today god we give you what is due unto your name you're worthy god you're worthy hallelujah be lifted up in this place be lifted up in our lives oh majesty we call upon you majesty thank you god hallelujah hallelujah he's an awesome god he's a mighty god <laughs>
true and living God, the only true and living God. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Hallelujah. You 
God, be glad to lift up your hands to him today because he's done so much. He's been better to you than anyone in your life. He's better to you than you've even been to yourself. Hallelujah. We should be happy and privileged to lift up our hands to the one and only living God. Hallelujah. You're wonderful. We bless you.
since we know that the world was created by the word of God, all he did was say, let there be. And it was. Imagine what we can do when we lift up the name of Jesus. If we would just speak the name of Jesus, if we would just lift him high, then every other name will fade away. We not only wanted to fade away, we wanted to just run away. We want every other name to flee because of the power of the Holy Spirit. Because darkness cannot dwell where there's light. Darkness cannot dwell where there's light. So when the world was framed by the word of God, what can we do by the power of his spoken word? Hallelujah, we speak your name, Jesus. We call you Messiah. We call you Deliverer. We call you Healer. We call you Provider. We call you Conquering King. You have never lost a battle. And you never will. You never will. You never will. You will never lose a battle. Our God is God. My God is God. everybody. Praise the Lord again. Just wanted to remind you that on uh, Thursday, November the 7th, from 6 to 7, there will be a long-term uh, care planning uh, uh, information meeting, and you will get good information that uh, you can, can use because it might attach itself to your, your income, your later in life income, and some things you might need to do to protect that and it'll be from 6 to 7 here at Dove Church. Now, there is a flyer, a, 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 a poster on the board downstairs, and it has Kamal's number on it. Make sure that you call him to RSVP because I think there's some refreshments afterwards. They want to know how many to prepare for. But everybody that can needs to come and be a part of it. The uh, information is good for you. It will help you understand what's next. 
and, and don't put it off as if it's not coming. We plan to keep living, so plan to plan to keep living. Amen? Plan to plan. And so uh, uh, let's, let's come out and support him. My neighbor, Marty Woods, who lives next door to him, is his mentor uh, agent, and so she's going to come and conduct the workshop. So let's be here right at, seven, at 6 o'clock. It's 6 to 7. It's a 40-minute presentation so we can hear. So if you come in midways, you're going to miss part of it. You need to hear the entire presentation. Amen? Amen. We thank God we were with uh, Marguerite yesterday as she we celebrate the home coin of her, her Aunt Dee Cosper, and it was a good service, and we were glad to be there and praying for her in this church, supported her. So we thank God for that. Keep praying for each other. Amen? Amen. Pray for Pastor. We had a good time in our men's class this morning. They, they, they heard some stuff, and and we were able to teach and, and share. And so so we, we just thank God. Next week, be on time, men, is our last class. So it's really our third small group uh, for this, this time. And it's been a blessed time. I've had a good time with them. We, we love each other, and we want the best for each other. And so God is doing it. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's receive special music at this time. I worship you. I worship you. 
And he keeps his worry the promise keeper. I mean, you know, he's a miracle worker. How I many you know he's a promise keeper? Come on, open your mouth and give him a good praise in this. Oh, you can do better than that. I said give him a good one. Hallelujah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, team. Ready for the word? Everybody with your Bibles. Repeating after me, this is my Bible. I am what it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught. Infallible, unchanging word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, as I gladly receive the word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Father, we thank you for this time in your word. We thank you that you will take us to new places, that you would refresh our understanding. God, we come against everything that has come to knock the word out of place today and declare that you are more than a conqueror, God. And we thank you, God, that you will prevail. And you said, even if the church is set up at the, at the gates of hell, it would not prevail. So we thank you for victory today. And we cancel every assignment of the evil one. And declare your people free, above, not beneath. Now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said, Amen. We want to talk today from the subject when little is more than enough. When little is more than enough. When little is more than enough. There's a scripture that says, don't despise the day of small beginnings. Don't despise small things. Because them in, in them is potential for great things. So don't despise it. Amen. Second Kings 4, 42 through 44. And it reads, Then a man came from Baal Shalisha. Don't name anybody that. (laughs) 
and brought the man of God. Everybody say, and brought the man of God. Bread of the first fruits. Uh-uh. Bread of the first fruits. Twenty loaves of barley bread and newly ripened grain in his knapsack. So the knapsack is like a backpack. And twenty barley loaves fit into the knapsack with grain. But this was this man's first fruit, 20 loaves. Now, they're not like the big old loaves that we make 10 sandwiches off of. These were little handmade loaves, not well-formed because they weren't baking pans, just a little loaf. So y'all won't think it's a big old Italian bread loaf. Because that would blow the perspective of, 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 of the lesson and its inference. 20 loaves of barley bread and 20 ripened grains in his knapsack. And he said, he said, meaning the prophet said, give it to the people that they may eat. But his servant said, what? Shall I set this before 100 men? He said again, give it to the people that they may eat. For thus says the Lord, they shall eat and have some left over. So he set it before them and they ate and had some left over according to, it was by the word of the Lord, had some left over. When little is more than enough. Elijah, Elisha rather, had a present brought to him. These 20 loaves and some grain. A present. It was a present. It was a present. A hard-earned present. Which in those days would not be despicable at any time to give a present to the house of God or the man of God. Not despicable. But there are times when your present is more valuable than others. Especially if your present comes out of dirt or famine. It becomes a richer present because it's coming from a place where there is lack. Are you there? See, it's okay when the economy is good, but what about when it tanks and you still bring something to the Lord? Oh, God, oh, God. That's a valuable, rich present. But that's because that man knew something. Maybe he had heard something before. Maybe he had heard some preach before, but he knew what to do in even the time of dirt. And, 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 and dearth is, means scarcity or lack. But it also means, I like when stuff has what I call a double entendre. It has a double meaning. It also means precious. So dearth can mean precious. How is it precious when it's little? Because it's the... It is, is, is what you've chosen to give away in spite of the circumstances. That was, that's what makes it precious. I, I'm still going to do this even though this is lacking. Ooh, I didn't get a lot of amens there. Cause we think the more we hold, the better it gets. But something may come down the pike that, that you still don't have enough money for. Because you believe God now or you believe him later. One way or another, you're going to have to believe it. But now in a special manner, valuable was this gift. When there was a dearth in the land, 
It was the first fruits. That means he didn't eat off of it and say, I think I'll take the rest of this hamburger to the Lord. Or after I finish shopping, this is what I'm going to do for the house of God. It was the first. That means if I count $10, 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. What dollar goes to him? That's first fruit. That represents 10% of $10. That first dollar. And you take it. When? When? Not after the Christmas fun. <laughs> and the vacation savings. When? And, and the first fruits, which was God's due, out of his increase. And when the priests and Levites were all at Jerusalem, out of, out of touch of, of people that were dispersed in the country, the first place, when they couldn't get to Jerusalem to bring their tithes and offering, they would bring their, or first fruits, they would bring it to the, the man of God in their locale. Like, it, it's all right to give to Jake's, but he ain't in your locale. Amen. And you can't be pastored by a TV personality. I don't care how much you like him. <laughs> Send him an invitation, call him, see will he come. Well, he will, but you might have to write out something. A little greater than a first fruit. <laughs> Are y'all out there? Does that make sense? You can be impressed by him, but, but the, the person that serves you is where you ought to be fruitful. <laughs> Does that make sense? So they gave it to Elisha with good reason because he was able to receive in behalf of the Lord. He's a man of God. And when it's all over, sometimes where you end up giving somebody to receive from you might be better than where you thought you should have put it. This is Elisha, the protege of Elijah, who was noted for doing miraculous stuff. Yeah, I guess I'm in a good place. I'm not in Jerusalem, but I'm with the, the man. <laughs> Stay with me. The benefit was that these gifts to the prophet would help operate the school of the prophets, which Elisha was now head over. Elijah started it. Elisha was a student. When Elijah went to be with the Lord, Elisha got his mantle, and he became head over all the schools of the prophets. And there was a hundred of them. And, and, and they were responsible for their lodging, their meals, their clothes, their training, their everything. So it was, it, it, it was lunchtime. And there was dearth in the land. There was famine in the land. There was lack in the land. But, 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 but for God's people, he, he promised to make a way to meet your need. So here comes a first fruit that has the potential to fill the need. But not only fill it, there were leftovers. So about, that was for mid-afternoon snack. I like how God gives. Because he gives more than enough. Sometimes we just pray for him to meet it. But sometimes he exceeds it. 
How many has had an exception? Ooh. He goes above. And, 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 and it blows our mind because we only wanted it at the level of our need. But God's not at the level of your need ever. He's never at the level of your need. He's always far above it. So he blesses like he wants to. <laughs> I'm glad he has a, a liberal mentality. That it ain't, I ain't trying to just do the basic. That's our mentality toward him. But he never just does the basic toward us. Aren't you glad he just don't do the basic? Yeah. I know some of you sitting and you say, you say, well, I need something right now. I don't care where you are. Look down and look up. You better than where you used to be. Yeah. Yeah. Would you just take a good holistic balanced look at what God continually does for you and what he continually meets for you. And when you want to think to complain, you must think. Instead of having an unbalanced evaluation of where you are, because I, the songwriter said, if it had not been, who was on my, tell me, tell me where would I be? He, he seen me through some stuff. I, I, I know it wasn't a million, but, but if I needed 20 and he gave me 25, he exceeded the need. Yes, yes. Come on, come on. How many of you can just thank him for excess? Yes. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I, 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 know, I know it don't look like it all the time, but, but, but just thank him. Oh, I'm about raggedy up here because... For, for a little extra. So in case I get hungry in the afternoon. You fed me at lunchtime. And what I got in the afternoon says. Oh you able to do it at, at evening meal too. It ain't what I hold on to. It's, what I, it's who I hold on to. See, you can keep holding on or you can hold on to him. Because he's the resource. You better stop trusting you because you ain't good enough. You need something greater than you. And you don't need it every five weeks. You need it every day. That's why he, he said this. In case you think I'm going to run short, morning by. Morning. He is not only my weekly bread, he's my daily. Oh, no, no, you don't have to get this today. <laughs> because you think it's by power and it's by might, but it's only by his spirit. That you're able to live, move, and have your being. And you keep waiting for a rainy day when a monsoon is coming. But the Bible says of him that he is the great cloud rider. And sometimes he steps off in the middle of your storm. And says, peace be still. So you hold on or you hold on. It's your choice today. I don't preach to nobody but me. It's your, it's your choice today. Keep holding on to all that stuff that you think is it. It's powerful to sow something precious and in short supply to the man of God. This principle opens the door to abundance and blesses beyond you into the lives of others. Yeah. Notice that when they true men of God, they don't mind giving it away. 
chunk of it. You just got it, so I got it to give away. Now, don't bum rush me after church, but you... But you've been blessed to be a blessing. How many suits can you wear? How many pairs of shoes you can wear? I looked in the closet. I had some, uh, 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 a tie, a couple of tie, and a couple of shirt that, that, that still had tags on and stuff. I said, what's wrong with this? There's something, something's wrong with that. If you're forgetting, you got stuff. You saving it for an affair to wear. Oh, this is my special outfit. And you ain't been nowhere special in five years. You better try it on. The special done got special. Oh, God, I'm trying to help in here. It really is a special. And you need to be special and give it away. Oh, God, come on. I, okay, okay, okay. I didn't have but a piece of sermon. I, I've been doing a double head. I had to do the men's class, and I said, God, you got to help me. And, and so, so I was so tired. I just and went to a funeral yesterday. Was room. I just laid down, and I said, I said I'm going to rely on the 90% that works while I'm asleep. I've given you the 10% today, but I'm going to rely on the 90%. Because I know while I'm sleeping, you're going to work it out. Amen. And he woke me up and said, get up, start working. And I, I got up checking it. She got up making oatmeal, and I was still in there pecking it, <laughs> frying bacon, and I was still in there pecking because I, and he kept speaking. He said, he said, just start talking about some people you know. <laughs> See, I don't have a month either to always to get a message together. I think I see somebody. I just. Sometimes the best ones are get up now. <laughs> Ooh, I, I know, I know that'll make you raggedier than anything. You. can only go with what you know and Elisha learned to operate this way from Elijah because when the gift came to him he said give it to the people give it to my guys give it to them he didn't even take any for said, give it to them now that's that in that situation but he learned it somewhere because he was a mentee from his mentor Elijah how do I know that this is why he woke me up he said go to somebody you know first Kings 17 8 to 16 now, this is Elijah. Then the word of the Lord came to him saying, Arise, go to Zarephath. We there? Which belongs to Sidon and dwell there. See? Look at this. God told the prophet, see? You don't see it, but I'm telling you to look anyway. Sometime when you don't see it, God says, see? I have commanded a widow there to provide for you. You know why she had to provide for him? Because the brook that he was at had dried up. So either you stay near a dry path or you go where somebody been commanded to take care of you. Y'all keep laying by dry places with your tongues out waiting for water to show up. But if he's your provider, you got to go where the provision is. Are, are you out there? So he arose and went to Zarephath. Say so he got up and he obeyed. That's what that means. He got up and he obeyed. 
feel like I got up this morning. And I wanted to lay there. How many know the best sleep is almost just before you wake up? I had snuggled deep down somewhere in that bed. The, 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 uh, I, I'm going to say it all the way. The tip of two was just right. <laughs> you know, you can sleep away that time. I ain't trying to find the most comfortable spot. I found it. My sweet spot in that bed just... Get up. I know some of my preachers don't want that kind of call. But I declare, if it happens to the mentor, dot, 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 dot. And when he came to the gate of the city, indeed, that means, whoo, it's true. A widow was there gathering sticks. She gathering sticks. She's in dearth. She's in lack. She picking up sticks off the ground because she didn't have money to buy wood for a fire. And he called to her and said, please, first of all, bring me a, a little water in a cup that I may drink. Sometimes you, before you get blessed, you get tested for your obedience. Let's see which way we're going to operate here. First of all, just bring me a little water in a cup. I'm going to see, can you respond obediently? Just bring me five dollars. No, ten. No, fifty. You need two thousand. Y'all don't like that. Let me not go down that path. Please bring me a little water in a cup that I may drink. God wants to know, are you willing to serve the need? And as she was going to get it, it didn't say she stopped and said, first of all, <laughs> where you come from? You're not from Zarephath. Where you come from? Asking me for water. I'm, I'm picking up sticks trying to handle my business. Trying to take care of my stuff. And here you come interrupting me. Can God... <laughs> to see if you are available. If your schedule is clear. Can he interrupt you? Stop you from going to do something. Stop you trying to make your way so he might try to get something to you. Can he interrupt you? Yeah. And then he got crazy. And as she was going to get it, he called to her and said, this is when your nerves really get frayed. Please bring me a morsel. Bring me a morsel. Bring me a morsel of bread in your hand.
Don't you see these sticks? <laughs> You're pressing me. You already asked for some water. But see, here is the life situation that can change your, your directives toward God. If you only look at your situation, you can't see that he can step inside of that situation and change things. See, sometimes help shows up and you act up on it so bad, it just balls up and backs up on you. Because you lost in your circumstance. You lost in your situation and... You, you, you so goal directed, you got a stick gathering mentality. And maybe God want to stop you from picking up sticks so he can really get something in your hand. Tap somebody, he wants to put something in your hand. Tell him he wants to more than sticks. And it ain't going to cost you nothing. But a little something. It ain't going to cost you but a little something. Come on here, Holy Ghost. So she said, she got religious. As the Lord your God lives, I do not have bread. Well, she told the truth. Only a handful of flour in a bin and a little oil in a jar. And see, I am gathering a couple of sticks that I may go in and prepare it for myself and my son that we may eat and die. She had the end of all, her own story already rehearsed out and laid out. So that we may eat and die. She was preparing the last supper. I want you to know that when you are preparing your last, I'm going to pay this final piece of note on the card. I'm going to pay this final as much as I can on my And then we're going to this. And Elijah said, everybody said, Elijah said, Elijah said to her, Do not fear. Go and do as you have said. Go do what you said you're going to do. Since you, you, you want to do that. <laughs> go and do. And this when he got crazy again. But make me a small cake from it first. What? Not only do you want me to make it, but bring it to me. You're not even going to come to table yourself, but your low down self come and get it. You, you want it, I'm going to give it to you. Come over here and pick it up. <laughs> Tired of you begging me. Just come get it. And they're asking you because they couldn't get there. For thus says the Lord God of Israel. He said, bring it to me and afterward make some for yourself and your son. For thus says the Lord God of Israel, the bin of flour shall not be used up. The bin of flour shall not be used up, nor shall the jar of oil run dry until the day the Lord sends rain on the earth. When will that be? I don't know. But as long as it don't rain, I'm going to have enough. 
So she went away and did, so she went away and did according to the word of Elijah. And she and, and, she and he and her household, she, he, and her household, she, he, Elijah said, if, if this where the fool going to be, I'm staying, sweetheart. He stayed because that's where God had commanded him. But he commanded her to feed him. So he had to provide for her so he could provide for the man of God. Did y'all see that? The bin of flour was not used up, nor did the jar of oil run dry, run dry according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke by Elijah. It didn't, it didn't run dry until when? When it rained. How long was that? I don't care. And I didn't care. They didn't write it in. <laughs> it didn't need to be written in. Every day she got up and didn't rain, I got food coming. <laughs> I got oil. We're going to eat. And it won't be the Last Supper. Amen. Well, see, what's so good about the, 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 the oil running is that, 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 that the oil was a resource for the future. Bread they ate immediately. So with the oil she could, after the famine was over, she could sell. Some. Because he gave them more oil than they needed, so... I believe sister was, was doing a little all run <laughs> in a house. Every time there was excess, she, oh, Lord. And she was putting, every day it didn't rain. She, oh, Lord, I got excess. I'm going to cook this little food for, for these boys. And, oh, Lord, I got excess. Because this is your retirement plan. This is when things get better. You could say, oh, Lord, in a time of famine, in a time of dearth, I had enough. I'm getting ready to get rid of this stuff right here. Oil. Oil. Anybody need oil? Well, people coming out of the famine didn't have none. But she did. I just thought I'd carry it just a little bit further. Let, let, let's go back. Y'all got that? Let's go back to Elisha. I'm not done. Tell somebody, say, he's not done. <laughs> Having freely been given, he gave, ordering it all to be set before the sons of the prophets, reserving none for himself, none for later. This is the place we find ourselves in, especially if there is lack. Jesus said something about your place of lack. From Matthew 6, 34, it says, Therefore, do not worry. From this point on, do not worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about his own things. Are you there? Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Don't worry about it. Tomorrow will take care of itself. Now, that's not frivolousness. To say you can do what you want, it just said that your tomorrow is covered. Yeah. Tap somebody and say, your tomorrow is covered. <laughs> you, you know that, don't you? Push somebody else and say, your tomorrow is covered. Don't, don't be mean. Just uh, push them and say, you know your tomorrow is covered. <laughs> or you don't know what you said. <laughs> you, you just... A, a, a scheduled, uh, 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 you know, more than enough. So for tomorrow to be the cover, that means your today was met. So your tomorrow cover. Elisha said, give it all to the people that they may eat. The 100 men who were prophets. The gift had to come through the hands of the prophets. Notice that they didn't come and give it to the hundred men. They came and gave it to the prophet. Yeah. I'm giving it to the do what you can mission. I'm sending it to Toys R Us or Toys for Tots. That's what I choose to do with my money. Woo! 
Oh, that, that hit something. Uh, let me go on. That. The gift had to come through the hands of the prophet to affect the will of God for the men. That means it was something about giving it to the man of God. Just like the widow had to give it, he said, bring it to me. So the increase came after it hit Elijah's hand and after it hit Elisha's hand. It's a principle. It's a principle. The same was true with Jesus in the New Testament. But you don't believe me. I gave you Elijah. Talking about Elijah. Let's talk about Jesus. Remember him? Yeah. Matthew 14, 15 through 20. And it said, when it was evening, his disciples came to him saying, this is a deserted place and the hour is already late. Send the multitudes away. That they may go into the villages and buy themselves food. But Jesus said to them, they do not need to go away. Ooh. Wow. Then he told his disciples, you give them something to eat. What? We just came and said it's too many and the hour is late. They can't get back into town. What? what? You, us give them something to eat. Just like Jesus, he expects you to do something. He expects you to operate someplace. You've been with me these days. You probably know what I, I think you're able to do. I want you do something. I'm going to bring them to pastor. No. <laughs> come, come on, none of y'all say that. I'm talking about some other folk, you know. Yeah. Pastor, get them. Bring, uh, get, <laughs> no, you do something. Woo, woo. And they said to him, We have here only five loaves and two fish. They had jumped a little boy for his lunch. <laughs> they jumped him. Because Jesus had put them to task. I, you know, that's my, my funny, whimsical side. Where'd y'all snatch that food from? <laughs> so you can give a report. He said, bring them here to me. How many loaves? Five. And how many fish? Two. He said, bring them here. Then he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass. And he took the the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up into heaven. Where did they bring it? Who did they give it to? They put it in his hand. If you wanted to be blessed, whose hand? Whose hand? Because nothing happened until it hit his hand. Yeah. Nothing happened until it hit Elijah's hand. Right. Ooh, ooh. Do, do y'all see that? Yeah. It's a principle in the earth. Nothing will happen until it hit the right hand. Right. Ooh, God. You keep trying to do it the way you want it, and nothing is happening for you because you put it in the wrong hands. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It has to go to God's agent in the earth. And it might be a good cause, but it's not God's agent. Yes. Are y'all out there? Yes. And when you do it, you are really being self-centered and disobedient. Because you don't want to obey. And he took the five loaves and the two fish, and looking up into heaven, he blessed and broke and gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples... He blessed and broke, gave the loaves to the disciples, and the disciples gave to the multitude. He blessed. He broke. He gave the loaves to the disciples. And the disciples, he blessed. 
He broke. Yes. He gave yes. to the disciples, yes. the church, yes. and they gave it yes. to the people. Hallelujah. Come on. He blessed. Yes. He broke. Yes. He gave it yes. to the disciples, yes. the church, yes. and they gave it to the people. Yes. He blessed. Yes. He broke. Yes. He gave it yes. to the disciples. Yes. And they gave it. So some of them ate. And were filled. And they took up 12 baskets full of the fragments that remained. There was left over. And I think the number was about 5,000. Not including, come on somebody. He blessed. And they gave. Come on, give God a good praise. The loaves given to Elisha, it's going back to Elisha, were little. It is likely no more than what one man would ordinarily eat. He would eat one of those small loaves as a meal. Yet with 20 of them, it, 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 it was not enough to satisfy 100 men. Verse 43 and 44 says, His servant thought that to set a little meat before so many men was, was but to tantalize them. It was embarrassing. But that's why he was a servant. He was thinking small. Oh, this ain't nothing. This not enough. This a hundred of them big old dudes. This not enough. These, it's only 20 loaves. Little grain in a knapsack. A backpack. This not enough. You limit the Holy One. Sometimes we forget that God is a multiplier. Yes. Question, do you think he needs our numbers and calculations? So you think he is dependent on your strength? Your addition? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 19, 20. Uh, God is on 20. We're short by 80. Charles Spurgeon said this, and I'm running to a close. Our weakness is a better weapon for God than our strength. Elisha, in God's name, pronounced it a full meal for them. And so it proved they ate and had leftover. Why? Because the bread increased as it passed through the hands of the man of God. Psalm 132 and 15 says, I will abundantly bless her provision. I will satisfy her poor with bread. And finally, for whom the Lord feeds, he fills. And what he blesses comes to much. You want the Lord to bless your less. So it'll come to much. Blessings to you today. Come on, bless him. Come on, bless him. Come on, bless him. Come on, if you didn't even like everything, bless him, bless him. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. 